Thank you for an amazing, an amazing presentation. One of the things that uh, I suppose the students have been asking since, uh, since you've just left the main auditorium is, how do you get from being somebody who's intensely interested in the nature of the creation of spaces and forms and what they might represent beyond just a construct, how do you move from that to being inc as incredibly successful as, a, as an architect of the commercial, but the commercial that's thinking, that's mm -hmm. giving something else? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. So it's like your history. <laughs> Yeah, I think the idea of uh, architecture as a you know cultural medium and maybe the most experimental one mm. is partly what kind of drives all this. You know, some days I might walk into the office and say, "I love film. I'd love to be a filmmaker. Or I'd love the pure free fall of graphic design where you're dealing with weightlessness and so forth and and pure emotion." But I love, in fact, the architecture uh, that has you know. Um, confrontation with the body and mm. that's what its medium is and it's different than sculpture and so forth. So essentially, you know, part of the reason why I decided to, to be an architect when I was a, a little, little kid is, is I, uh, I said, architects do big things. You know, they have grand ideas and, and uh, they transform space. And so uh, that sense of scale and possibly permanence, although I don't think I understood permanence in the way mm -hmm. in which if I were to grown up in London, uh, what that meant. But so in other words, it's a toolkit of things to play with that even a filmmaker doesn't have because we've got statics and gravity and reflection and materiality in real time. Yeah. And uh, so I feel like it's got the greatest amount of possibilities for expression. So then how do you move from how do you move from a kind of an academic career mm -hmm. to then transform into somebody who's actually who's making a difference with all of that kind of thinking because i think a lot of, for a lot of students they can't see the link between the academic world and the and the world of the world of architecture they see represented around them mm -hmm. how do you, how did you do that well maybe so few did so yes, few have yes uh, i think that um, it I can allude, you know, to the opening kind of gambit of the mm -hmm. talk about taking the wedge out between, you know, school and, and uh, uh, sort of uh, the public career, you know, of an architect in a way. And I could say, thank God somebody finally hired me <laughs> to do something. <laughs> somebody, you know, put some money down and mm -hmm. said, I, I, not only do I somehow trust you, but I believe that your ideas can, can translate. And um, I think it was just wish fulfillment, you know, all those years of working and drawing. Because I didn't spend time doing anything else, you know, for 15 years. I didn't make movies. I mean, I, 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 I played music. That was yeah. my one uh, outlet. But I worked on architecture. I didn't draw furniture or design cars or paint. So super dedicated, you know, to the medium. And uh, I don't think I could get to where I am now without that, uh, you know, S totally sustained connection. I couldn't probably drop it for a while and then paint or drop it for a while and, and mm -hmm. be a photographer. So, of course, I studied photographers and filmmakers, but always went into the medium of, of architecture. Call it a, uh, what I always say is I was condemned to be an architect. I had no choice. And that, that just keeps everything moving with a certain kind of inertia. And then there's a you know, usual kinds of thing, a little luck here, mm -hmm. a, a moment there, somebody uh, becomes interested. And so does it start with us, does it start with us with one small project? Is that kind of, and, and then you kind of, how, what do you do that makes it into another and another? How, do you, how does that work? Mm -hmm. How did it work for you? Mm. They started, yeah, with installation projects um, in, at the beginning of the 90s that I did in Japan had a little bit of money free to uh, explore some things and that time I was exploring kind of issues of uh, media and communication mm -hmm. in, in installation work because I was there and that was in a very impressive world to me. Uh, then it led, you know, uh, a number of years later into bigger installations and then, you know, the first kind of real good project we did was a, you know, 110 square meter uh, shop, uh, eyeglasses shop. Uh, with clients who who really wanted to uh, uh, engage with 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 me and, and my office as as um, designers, they're designers, not business people, mm -hmm. in, in at at the first level. So we shared that kind of love. It was it was great. And I also uh, didn't care that I didn't have you know a, a 
somebody's got to be the, the paradoxical, there is a beginning mm -hmm. or not a beginning. And for, for me, this, everybody begins at some point. Um, and it was small, but intense. So then, after this time, you could begin to build what I think kind of like for a series of projects which we call iconic. What actually, what we really mean is projects with meaning. So they're almost, they all, they're teaching projects in many ways. And uh, as a kind of a route to go down, you never, you didn't really make your, your life easy. You know, <laughs> it wouldn't, like, this, I mean, I mean, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't stuff which simply arrives as a sketch. It's actually the crafting of it, the materiality of it, the consideration yeah. of it. Yes. I mean, you could have chosen a slightly easier route to kind of, you know, suddenly make the big box. Right. But you still, st you stuck, you stuck with this, I suppose this essential wish to describe, to consider, to give, even for a commercial, it has to give back to public space. Yes. And that must have been quite difficult against commercial pressures. Yeah. I mean, I think that fortunately, being a, being a professor for, you know, basically my whole career as well, and just having a culture where uh, the, you know, you know, teaching students about how to think, which I always say is if I'm going to do anything, that's it. You'll mm -hmm. learn techniques, but uh, we're going to teach you how to uh, do the things that I was doing tonight. Uh, have the nerve to fabricate um, an argument, whether it comes out of poetics, whether it comes out of uh, rigorous logic you know, to teach them uh, that there are avenues to be able to create intensity to the work that can touch people in a lot of ways. Sometimes it can touch them in the gut, sometimes it touches them in the head, and I think that the work that I've done is just an extension of, of teaching students how to do it because, you know, you're a professor too, and, and uh, it's not surprising to say that teachers want to learn more than their students. That's why indeed, we do it. Indeed, indeed. We are eternal. Uh, in that quest for, you know, thinking and learning in a way. And building is just a, a, a very intense medium to kind of, you know, play that out. Of course, I've got risk management, you know, all yeah, around, yeah. Uh, for sure. But I've managed to figure out how to uh, 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 navigate that so that it seems to be less, less of a pressure and less visible. I mean, it's just really how we, we, we work in the office and the kinds of projects that we have. Now I've got to ask you the really trite question. Yes. And the trite question is, does the kind of work you do make you, do you think that's actually giving you kind of a niche that makes you really very much in demand as compared to, I suppose, what we consider to be a mainstream commercial practice? Mm -hmm. Because in, cause I, the question is, I couch the question in a way to sort of see whether it's, is there a degree of pigeonholing? And also, is that something that kind of gives you an edge out there? Mm, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a kind of paradoxical question, mm. isn't it? Does it, does it open up or close down? And how do you feel about it? I mean, do you, you like it like this, or well, are you thinking, give me, give me two billion dollars? And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's a reasonable question. It's you know? a, it's a reasonable question, and I think that um, if one were to really look closely at, you know, literally what I began with and and where the work is now, it's, it's. It's got an imprimatur uh, 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 authorship to it, and I recognize that. But I also think that the work is moving. Mm -hmm. It's moving around, and it's trying to move and progress. So even if there's a, a sense of identity, I also don't feel like um, I'm ever being asked to produce an autograph. And that each project, and I, and I create this relationship with the client. You know, you can't, you can't really expect something uh, specific you can expect something great. Mm -hmm. You can expect something that has a, a tremendous amount of authenticity to it. But we need to have a certain amount of freedom to uh, uh, create a, a constellation of things either that we're continuing to research or that something may fall into our lap in terms of what we want to work on. I mean, if, uh, I don't, I don't, I, I'm like everybody. I, I live in the world and, and absorb uh, so much. Uh, we all have influences mm -hmm. and so forth. I mean. I don't think that we just are mimetic and give the world back everything that it already sees and has. I think there is some singular qualities to it, but I don't feel like we're, um, uh, we or me, uh, I don't feel imprisoned in any way. So I don't know that it's, it's either the lever to, to launch from all the time or if it's also something that 
limits. I would presume that it does both. Mm. You know, and to be quite honest. And the, and the paradox is something, the question is whether you, can, whether, that's whether you sustain it, or out of that, do you get a sense of a direction that you'd like to continue to go in? Mm -hmm. And, you know, projects have kind of, there's a real variation in size, they, they both have the same love. I think one of the things people said, he seems really kind. Um, I think it's about the way in which you just dealt with those students who came to ask you some mm. questions. Mm. And that kindness is incredibly powerful. But beyond that, mm. is there a direction that you feel you'd like to have your work go in? I can't, I can't say. I mean, you know, one, I, when I was younger, I thought the idea was to, you know, create uh, a project and, you know, you, you, you perfect it, mm. you know, your whole life if you think something can contribute. But I also uh, am restless, just like everybody else, and I feel like uh, culture will either tell you something's exhausted or you'll tell yourself something's exhausted. Um, maybe it's not, but you, you, you find a way to hybridize ideas and so forth. I think just as long as the work is moving. And, 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 and I know better than anybody, you know, I in a way, because I'm my own critic too, if the work is moving. And moving means uh, continuing to try to add to the conversation, not just doing something different for, for its own sake, or having a crisis and if you don't have a new idea then you just take something of someone else to, to sort of appropriate it. I mean I'm m much, much more deliberate you know, than that, but I also feel like uh, this uh, idea of uh, just pushing and being relentless and I like the idea of being prolific and I mean that not in an egotistical way, mm -hmm. but the more you make, the more you work through, yep. the more you see. And um, uh, now in my mid-50s, it also feels like, you know, time moves always a little bit uh, uh, quicker and, and you want to yeah. keep working, you know. <laughs> it's the architect's dream, right? We, yeah. we just keep going. But, it's, but for you, the, your career just is, is flowering. You know? I mean, for a lot of people, they want to keep going, but they, wanna, they just want to keep control. Yours is really burgeoning. It's international. Yes. And the other interesting thing, I think, for students is to see an academic who makes it happen. That's kind of inspiring for them because they begin to believe in the process that mm -hmm. by teaching you can learn and there is that kind of reciprocal activity, which otherwise they, they don't get. Yes. The question, though, that they, are, they want to know is what would, what would he advise, what advice would he give me about anything? Because he's done it. Mm -hmm. In fact, some academics would ask that question. <laughs> I, sh I should be asking you that question myself. Yes. Right. Like, what, adv and what advice do you give a young person involved in this interest in making of environments? Mm. Well, I think, uh, you know, I'm asked the question, you know, how did what happened between, you know, the time of graduating and, and a certain amount of time, the first 10 years, you know, what happens? And, you know, the answer is there certainly are pathways and there's sort of models, but I don't know if there are blueprints uh, of, of then that sort of work now. I mean, mm. for instance, if you take uh, somebody like Big, um, yeah. that uh, Bjarke is, uh, is 35 and, you know, lives and works in Northern Europe, but has a, a different way of going about designing. It's almost like procuring projects is designing yes. for, for him and them and, you know, not to dim diminish what they do. and, and uh, Whereas, uh, you know, for me, maybe it's a sort of older school project on the one hand, which is I had to worry about what my product was, so to speak, before I uh, uh, could think about was it going to be useful or relevant mm -hmm. to anybody. So a kind of slower, more introspective thing. But on the other hand, I'm also restless and, and feel like, you know, time is something that you just want to uh, create uh, more of so that you can, you know, uh, push as well. We all are ambitious, you know, we just have different ways to go about it. In terms of what I would say to a student though, I do think that it d gets down to the core of your personality and who you are as a person, whether you're kind or, or, or restless or those two things go together. You need to find the ecology that supports who you are, right? Yeah. And that's really what it is. And I think it's a lot more looking around at that level, whether you're a collaborator or a leader whether you're uh, uh, somebody who's an idea person or somebody who's an executor, somebody who's technically minded versus conceptually minded, no one is everything. 
and uh, I, certainly I'm not, and you have to create a, you know, a team to do that. So I think it's really getting in touch with who you are to be sort of uh, California about it. It's <laughs> funny you should say that because <laughs> I shouldn't quote him, but a prominent architect who's, uh, who's here said, he's so grounded, he's so grounded. It's like talking to a real person mm. as opposed to talking to star architects. Who right. There's a completely, there's a different thing about you and about your practice. So, what's it like being a star? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that uh, uh, being known for being sort of an architect's architect, mm -hmm. which I know and people have told me that, it, it, it's a good feeling. I can't deny it. I mean, and you don't set out to, uh, you know, win friends and approval and all of that. You, you know, you do your work. And, and I also feel like as a teacher, I, and as an architect, I, I try to provoke and try to, uh, 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 yes, I try to inspire, but I'm not a motivational speaker. You could walk out of a lecture and go, that was bollocks. And uh, no, I don't think so. Well, <laughs> not after, not after today. Okay. Well, um, then I took the moment to be persuasive then, mm. and uh, my persuasiveness, uh, you know, worked. And it was all frank and honest. And and I think that I do purvey in a kind of genuine frankness that uh, might be a little bit different than what you would, you know, get in 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 the contemporary world where somebody's image or impression was going to come before, you know, their work in a way. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm happy with the way things are going, and yet there's always the usual genuine sense of uh, disappointment and what happens next and fear and, and, and uh, doubt and so forth. But those are motivators.